Chiefs Kingdom, happy Tuesday, and welcome into the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Jace Andrews, and we've got a pretty nice rundown for you today. We're going to be the latest on Rasheed Rice, talking about what is going on in that situation. Haven't gotten to mention too many updates over the past couple of days, so I want to make sure you are fully informed on that. Plus, with that situation going down, could Brett Veach and the Kansas City Chiefs be interested in signing a Tyler Boyd? Well, the rumors are starting to fly around. We will give you the latest on that and what he could bring to the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, obviously, if you want the latest news on Rasheed Rice, well, subscribe here. It's free. You're going to get coverage of not just Rasheed Rice, but the entire Kansas City Chiefs squad. We're covering Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, everything you need to know leading up to the NFL draft, and on where we're putting out videos every single day, a lot of times, twice a day. So you're not going to find better Chiefs coverage than right here on YouTube. And the best thing is, it's free. So I will tell you this. Go down there, hit that subscribe button, do it for three days. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Let's talk about Rasheed Rice and the latest going on with him. So obviously, it's now been over a week since Rasheed was involved in that hit-and-run accident in Dallas, Texas, in which he was driving a Lamborghini, racing a Corvette, and was speeding down 75, Highway 75 here in Dallas, Texas. Now, Dallas police also obviously kind of came forward and we had this original tweet back when it originally kind of came about saying, Dallas police say two drivers in a Corvette and Lamborghini were racing when they crashed, causing a six-vehicle accident. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to show up, but if you would like to look it up on Twitter, there is dash cam footage. Both drivers ran, and now we have more coming out here saying he was indeed the driver of the Lamborghini. So now you admitted to being the driver of the Lamborghini, and obviously, given you admitted that, you then walked away from the scene, which is not great because at the least it's a misdemeanor in the state of Texas. Uh, depending on the injuries and the severity of them, that that's obviously could, could go to even worse, potentially to the area of felony charges, which is not something you want to even talk about. Now, the big thing here is that obviously Rasheed Rice is young. I mean, he just graduated college or just got out of college from SMU this past year. Then obviously first year with the Chiefs and he kind of got a, influx of money to say that doesn't excuse anything and um but the latest news here kind of comes with a little bit from dallas morning news uh got this about uh marijuana possession also in the car according to wffa tv channel 8 a police report says 10.8 grams of marijuana less than an ounce by the way was found in the lamborghini suv that rice was driving in Texas, possession of two ounces or less of marijuana is a Class B misdemeanor punishable of up to 180 days in jail and a fine of up to $2,000. Now, I'm not trying to defend him here. I'm not trying to do that at all, and I think that I really want to just present you the facts. However, I will say, you kind of run into the port, 10.8 grams is not a lot. That's not like he was carrying around you know, you know, too much. The fact that it was there is not good because it, it's illegal. It's a misdemeanor. And he already technically would have one misdemeanor charge already on him given he had the hit and run, which could be, obviously be upgraded to a felony depending on the severity of the injuries. But again, that's not a lot. Now, they continued on the article because there was actually a report uh, that Dallas Morning News has saying Dallas County District Attorney John Cruzett announced in 2019 that his office would not take first-time low marijuana cases. By mid-August 2023, on the heels of a law to create a path to remove rogue DAs, spurred by criticism of democratic district attorneys who enacted policies to no prosecute certain crimes, Crusoe's office, office released a memo saying staff will individually review each case and use discretion in chain charging and in the final disposition of the case. The new guidelines supersede previous policies, including the non-prosecution of some marijuana cases. Long story short, this is now a part of the investigation. It's going to have to be something that will be investigated and will be taken into account and potentially add a misdemeanor to what has already been at least a misdemeanor on him at this current time. Now, I know the amount is small, but it's, it's still a crime, and unfortunately, you don't just break the law and get away with it, even if you are a professional athlete. That's not how it works. Good news for, I think, a lot of people, he's cooperating with Dallas PD. And obviously, I know that like that's the least he can do at this point. There's been a lot of trouble that he has caused, and I think he understands that. However, 
I want to go to his lawyer here and kind of really remind you what we're talking about with this. Royce West had a statement just last week saying, quote, the fact is you got a 23-year-old young man that's never been in this type of situation before. You will get an opportunity to hear from him hopefully within the next week. Quote, now ask you another quote, why don't you do a story of who he is as opposed to what occurred because it seems as though what you're saying is based on this one incident. You're going to define him based on this incident as opposed to his entire body of work? I would say to each and every one of you, if all of us had to be defined by one incident, then that would be ridiculous as opposed to our entire body of work. So I'd ask that you as the media look at his entire body of work before saying exactly who he is, end quote. That was a statement from Royce West, the lawyer of Rasheed Rice last week. The bottom line, I think, is that, the, yes, this is unfortunate. I truly never would have guessed that Rasheed Rice would be involved in any type of incident like this. From the guy that I had gotten to cover, from the guy that we had gotten to talk about, from the guy that we had been getting reports on, this doesn't sound like him. However, he does have to pay the consequences. It doesn't mean that just because he wouldn't do this, he did. And now you have to immediately figure out how to make this best. And he has already said he wants to make sure that the life goes back to normal for each and every person that was affected by his incident. All right, coming up, obviously this causes some concern on the Chiefs' side in terms of playing. So should they sign Tyler Boyd? Still a free agent, still a guy who could honestly be a very good value play for the Kansas City Chiefs. And we could potentially see him in a Chiefs uniform very, very soon. Before that, let's talk about one of our amazing sponsors, Prize Picks. You can get a $100 deposit match at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. And here's the best part. Obviously, basketball is now over, at least in the college aspect, as the national championship UConn Huskies for the second time in a row. But that just means that football well, is starting to come around the corner. And so we got some season-long totals for NFL. Obviously, we got Mahomes. We got Travis Kelsey. I'm going more with Mahomes' season passing yards. I'm going more with Kelsey's receiving yards. The more on receiving yards for Kelsey is an absolute steal. Dude has had over 1,000 yards in every single season he's been in the NFL, except for last year. So that number, a little bit more down than it probably should be. And then Deontay Johnson playing in Carolina. I don't think he's a good receiver, and I don't think that Bryce Young is going to be able to get the ball to him, given uh, I'm pretty sure Bryce Young is four foot five and can't see over his offensive line. So I'm going to go less there, more on Kelsey and more on Mahomes. They've got a bunch of season-long totals. You can go check them out. Here's how you play prize picks, though, because they also have MLB. The Masters are coming up. They've got a bunch of stuff going on. NBA is still happening. NHL. You can choose two or more players, two to six. You pick more or less on their prize picks projections. Then you choose flex or power play, depending on your confidence level in your picks. Prize Picks super awesome. It's the best way to play daily fantasy sports. Plus, it's the largest DFS app in North America. Now, once again, you can get a $100 deposit match by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS. We're going to put that link in the comments and the description of this video. Prize Picks, it's daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, with a potential suspension for Rasheed Rice, the Chiefs now have to consider potentially signing another wide receiver. Uh, obviously, this wide receiver room last year, not the greatest. This year, you lose MVS, you get Marquise Brown. But, Rasheed Rice, wide receiver one for now. If a suspension is coming, which uh, obviously he could be facing much more than a suspension, potentially even more of a, a criminal charge and all that, then that would cause some problems, at least you know, thinking of a play aspect. Obviously, don't want to go past Rasheed Rice and what's going to happen all that. But from a play aspect, I honestly, in this wide receiver room, only trust Hollywood. I, I, I got to be honest. I, I, I know that there's still people out there that believe in Kadarius Tony. I can't. <laughs> from what I saw last year, I just cannot look at that and think, okay, yeah, I trust that he's going to be an adequate wide receiver, much less that. So uh, obviously, Sky Moore, I actually do have a little bit more faith in him. He needs to play in the slot, and they just haven't been playing him. When he's in the slot, his stats are double anything he's ever produced. It, it just makes sense. And it was going to be perfect because that's where he was going to be this year. Now you have to kind of figure it out with either a free agent or a draft pick to make sure Skymore goes back to the slot. 
Well, Tyler Boyd could be exactly that this past year. 667 yards, 10 yards per catch, two touchdowns, and they got 67 receptions. Actually, funny story, he was the oldest, yet he played more games than both Jamar Chase or T. Higgins. Let's talk about durability when you're getting up there as a wide receiver. Uh, obviously, again, he has been really, really, really good throughout his entire career. Since getting Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, it's slowed down a tad. 800 yards, though, still in 2020 in T. Higgins' first year. 828 with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. And then he had 762 and 667 in these past two years. Five touchdowns in 2021 and 2022. Now, I know that we're talking about him coming to the Chiefs, and that has been a team that he has been linked to. However, he has been linked to three different teams. And we'll kind of talk about each one of those and why maybe those are a better fit or not as good as a fit as the Kansas City Chiefs. Those three being the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those are the one, that's the one that, honestly, he's most heavily linked to. That's been a talk pretty much since the beginning of free agency. The Los Angeles Chargers. Their wide receiver room stinks. Even with Tyler Boyd, it's still bad. So uh, I guess cool for them if they get him. And the Chiefs have also been one that they have been talking to and linked to. The Bills, in some facet, have thought about it, but he's not been linked too much to them. These three are the ones that are looking like the prime places for Tyler Boyd to land. Would you like the Chiefs to sign Tyler Boyd? Now's your time to let me know. Type S for sign if you're getting him in on the squad in 2023. And then type P for pass if you are saying, nah, I don't want him. I'm good. Let's get somebody somewhere else. S for sign, P for pass. What are you doing if you want the Chiefs to sign Tyler Boyd or not? There's five other wide receivers still on the market that I think would fit well in Kansas City. And these are kind of my rankings for how I would, I guess, put them on my big board of free agents. Odo Beckham Jr. is still number one. I think we have been talking about him being a Kansas City Chief for two years now. Michael Gallup, I don't understand why people consider him a low-level wide receiver. He played with Dak Prescott, and I don't trust that he was exactly the greatest quarterback for him. We know that Mahomes can make guys very, very good, and I think Gallup will be a prime candidate. McCall Harmon already knows the offense, still a free agent, be cheap. Hunter Renfro is one name that I've heard passed around. That would be funny, just because he's been a Raider for his entire career until now. That'd be hilarious. Michael Thomas fits the Chiefs' vibe so much. I don't know if I want him, but he fits what the Chiefs have always done at wide receiver and just getting these guys who were you know, former superstars. And you talk about Kadarius Tony, it's kind of a similar instance there. Beach will probably wait, though, until the Rasheed Rice incident is finalized. Obviously, that is something that has not been fully confirmed that he will be suspended. I know that that is talk, and that is starting to go around, especially since he's facing potentially two misdemeanor charges, uh, at least, and maybe a misdemeanor and a felony. But at this point, you can't really do anything until you know, because you got to worry about your cap space. And right now, Rasheed Rice is still on top of that. you got to worry about your, your depth chart and all that, and Right now, he's still a part of that. So it's just a waiting game for Brett Beach, and depending on what happens then, we might see something happen, either the signing of a wide receiver from free agency or maybe a little bit more of a hard-headed trade in the draft to move up, go get an A.D. Mitchell, go get somebody of that man. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys, because we have a bunch of amazing content here on the Chiefs Report. YouTube.com slash Chiefs TV. Shout out to Sam for making that flash down there on the screen. We always appreciate you hanging out with us. And hey, if you made it to the end of the video, you must have liked something. So that's all we got for you today, Chiefs Kingdom. We really do appreciate you watching. Peace out.